Hey everybody, and welcome to our online service here at Park Ridge Presbyterian Church. My name is Amanda, I get to be one of the pastors here and the host of our online worship service. And I'm excited that you have found us, that you have found the time to uh, join us in worship today here on our YouTube service. If you are just getting to know us, just finding us, we would love to get you a little bit better connected. And one of the ways that you can do that is by going to our website, parkridgepresby.org slash getconnected. There you can fill out the I'm new here form, sign up for our newsletter, and find out how you can connect with us on social media throughout the week. One of the ways that we always encourage people to take a next step is uh, to think about giving financially. We believe that God calls us to give and live generously, and we're so grateful for all the generous folks at Park Ridge Presbyterian Church that make all of our ministries possible and help our ministries make a difference in the community. Um, and so if you are trying to think about a next step of faith and, and haven't thought about giving financially, we invite you to learn more about that. You can go to parkridgepresby.org slash giving. We're inviting everyone right now to um, think specifically about giving to our um, lounge project, the First Impressions Lasting Connections Initiative. It's a renovation to our lounge and lounge bathrooms. The work is underway um, and it's going to look great and we invite you to think about giving financially to that and we are so grateful to those who have um, contributed already to that project. Well, a lot of our kids are heading back to school, our teachers are heading back to the classroom, and so we do wanna lift up in a moment, lift up our school years uh, in prayer, and we just want to tell all of our PRPC kids, students, and parents out there that we hope you have a great and successful year, uh, and we're excited to be along for the ride and be a part of it. Um, so we're excited about that new school year. We have um, a big anniversary, a big celebration coming up in a couple months. Um, we are celebrating the 75th anniversary of Park Ridge Presbyterian Church. Uh, and that's gonna come about in October of this year. And there's gonna be some special celebrations and a special service for that. And we invite you to just save that date, save October 15th, 2023 in your calendar. That is the 75th anniversary celebration Sunday. And we invite you to be a part of that. We're gonna have um, old confirmation classes coming back. We're gonna have a guest preacher and we are gonna be giving giving thanks to God for the 75 years of ministry that have taken place on this corner here at Crescent and Lincoln and Delphia here where we have um, been able to share God's love and spread God's love through the ministries uh, and the relationships of this place. So we invite you to celebrate that with us. Again, that's October 15th, 2023. You'll be hearing more about that as um, the events get closer. Pastor Josh has a message for us in our series, Who Do You Say That I Am? A message series on the Gospel of John. We've got a couple more weeks um, and we're looking at a couple more stories of, of who Jesus is and, and the impact Jesus made and why we should follow Jesus. So Josh has that message for us and the band has some new music for us that can help us connect to God through worship. Let me pray for us as we continue to worship together. Let's pray. Holy God, we lift up to you this time of year all of the newness, the new beginnings, the new schedules, the new routines, the new teachers, the new friends. We lift up to you everything that is good about new things. And God, we lift up to you everything that is hard about new things. God, when we are feeling anxious and overwhelmed about what we don't know is coming, God, we ask that your spirit would draw close to us and that we would remember to draw close to you when things feel uncertain and unstable. God, we lift up to you this community, um, our, our small groups ministry for our next gen students, um, the parents that, that gather together and support one another as they are raising their kids in the faith. We lift up to you all of the, the circles and the music ministries that are gonna be restarting here in the fall. God, we give you thanks for nearly 75 years of ministry here in this community. God, we pray that you would continue to help us be faithful to your call, faithful to the mission of this church. Help us to see it and hear it and believe it so clearly so that your gospel would be known here by the folks who gather here and everyone that they come in contact with. God, we give you thanks for your son, Jesus. 
We pray this in his name. Amen. One, two, three, four. Just sit and wait for all your goodness, hope to feel your presence. And I could just stay, I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you, hope to feel something again. So what do you want out of life? Do you want money? Do you want fame? Fortune? Some people want power. Some people want influence. How many of us maybe don't want a few more followers on our favorite social media platform, right? But when we pursue these things in life, and by these things, I mean those things that we say, when somebody asks us what's enough of that, and you say, 
maybe a little bit more, or I'm not sure, when we pursue these things in life, don't we know that ultimately these things keep our lives from being what we want them to be? I mean, when we pursue fame or we pursue influence, like these things are gonna let us down ultimately. So what if instead of pursuing these things in life, what if we decided that we were gonna pursue what Jesus wants in our life? What if we decided that, for instance, that we were going to pursue the one thing that is going to lead to all the other things that Jesus wants for us? What, what do you think our lives would be like if we did that? Now, in order to pursue that one thing, wouldn't we need to know what that is? And I'm gonna tell you what it is in just a minute. And I didn't make this up because it's something that Jesus taught to his disciples and to his followers. But I'm gonna tell you what it is. And I know you're gonna say for just a moment, you're gonna be like, well, that's really simple. That's, that can't be the key to having what I really want in life or the life full of what I want. But I'm gonna tell you right now, like a lot of things in life, isn't it true that the simple things actually lead to the lives that we want? And it's the complicated and the unnecessary things that lead to lives being full of the things we don't want? Well, let's just see what Jesus has to say about what we should pursue and what we want our lives to be filled with. And the reason it's so simple is because he tells us what it is. And it's he wants us to pursue lives that are filled with joy. Now, you're saying to yourself right now, I know, I know what you're thinking to yourself. You're saying, well, that can't be it. Now, I know what you're also probably thinking, or I have a hunch what you're thinking is, that is so simple. And how can that be the thing that Jesus wants for us? Well, the reason it's because joy, when Jesus says, I want you to have joy, it's not the kind of joy or happiness for that matter. And that's a whole different thing. It's not the kind of joy necessarily that we think about in life. Because when Jesus says that he wants his joy to be in us so that our joy might be complete, that's what he says. And what he was saying there is he wants us to have this particular experience of life that's the culmination of being that is full of relationship with God and relationship with others and a contentment with our life, a, a realization that we are pursuing what God wants for us. And that's what joy is in our lives when Jesus is talking about it. Because what he's talking about is this sense of deep connection with God and deep connection with others that comes from a particular type of relationship and experience that we have with others. Now, what it comes from is having the kinds of experiences with other people like Jesus had. And we look at the ways in which Jesus was able to have those kinds of experiences. There are three things that he did in his life that led to him having joy. The three things that he did were helping people, healing people, and spending time with the people that were adding value to his life. Those three things are the ways in which Jesus experienced the joy of the Lord in his life. And that's what he wants for us, is to experience the same thing. Now, I mentioned a minute ago that the particular thing that Jesus says is that he's taught us these things, he's shown us these things, so that his joy can be in us and that our joy may be made complete. And to have that, we wanna do what Jesus did. So to heal, to help people, and to spend time with people who are good for us. And when we do those things, we'll have the kind of joy in our lives that God wants for us, and we'll have the kind of lives of people that God wants for us. Now think about this. If you are helping people, no one has ever said, oh, I help them too much. Now, now sometimes people will say, I can't do more. I need to rest or recover before I get there. And that's a different kind of thing, right? But no one said, you know what? I really regret the time I spent helping somebody. Or maybe you've helped somebody heal. Maybe that's a relationship healing. Maybe that's a wound from the past that you've helped them heal. Maybe you're a professional. You're a doctor, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, and you, you are in the helping professions, the healing professions. And how many times have you ever heard somebody say, oh, I'm really upset that I helped that person heal? No, no one is ever saying, oh, I, didn't, I shouldn't have helped someone heal. Because we know that helps us have that kind of relationship and a kind of help, helping and healing of somebody. Or how about any of us that have ever spent time with people that we know fill us up, that are, that are good for our souls, that are help us to restore, to rest and recover? Has we, have we ever said, oh, I spent too much time with my favorite person and I like, really regret that? You know, you can take that to the extreme perhaps, but most of the time we're, we know that it's been time well spent. And when we do these things, that gives us that sense of joy 
and that sense of connection and that sense of relational contentment that is exactly what Jesus had in his life, that relationship with God and others that is ultimately so fulfilling. And that's the joy that Jesus had and the joy that he wants to make complete in us. So if we want to have the kind of lives that Jesus wants for us, we want to have lives where we're pursuing the joy that he had by helping people, by helping to heal people, and by spending time with the people that are good for us in our lives. And if we spend our lives, our, our waking days, our, our careers even, our orienting our families around these things, think about how much joy, how much peace, how much contentment in a good way, not complacency, contentment that we'll have in our lives. That's what our lives will be all about. And we'll have everything that God wants for us because we'll have the joy of Jesus leading the way in our lives. So if you have found yourself, and I have found myself at this place at times, where I've been over pursuing of influence or, or power, or sometimes I've wanted more money in an unhealthy way, or maybe it's been wanting to, or more influence on social media. I know that's like a modern day problem, but that's one of the things we have going on. If you've ever found yourself overvaluing or over pursuing those things in your life, why don't we listen to Jesus? Why don't you and why don't I, why don't we listen to Jesus? And instead of pursuing those things, let's pursue joy. Not the kind of joy that is fleeting, and certainly not like happiness only. But let's pursue the kind of joy that is going to make the joy of the Lord complete in us. Complete our lives by helping people, by healing people, and by spending time with the people that are good for us. When we do these things, we'll have the kind of lives filled with the kind of moments that God wants for us. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your grace so free washes over me you have made us new now life begins with you it's your endless love pouring down on us you have made us new now life Release from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your grace so free washes over me you have made me new now life begins with you it's your endless love pouring down on us you have made us new now life begins with you Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That 
That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new, now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new, now life begins. Well, thanks again for joining us for this online service. Like we say often, we do hope this time has been a blessing to you. And we are so grateful you have decided to make this service a part of your day whenever you might be watching it. Hey, if there is a way that we can help you, if there's a way that we can help you heal, or even if there's a way that you need to spend more time with people that are good for you, we want to hear about those things. So if we can help you in any way that we can, we want to. And please be in touch to let us know what that might be. Well, again, thanks for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you next week for our online service.